Good afternoon. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, here today. I'm going to do my best to keep my sunglasses off for as long as I can, but I know you're going to forgive me when I have to put them back on again. Uh, my name is Dale Nally, and I am the Associate Minister of Natural Gas and Electricity and MLA for Mournville, St. Albert, and I'm happy to be your host uh, for today's announcement. I am proud to join Minister Isaac and other partners from industry to share this exciting news. As a government, our responsibility is to ensure both the current and the future economic prosperity of this great province. Key to our future is taking Alberta's existing strengths and leveraging them into new opportunities. For the natural gas sector, that means emerging industries like hydrogen, along existing ones with enormous growth potential like net zero petrochemicals. Locations like the Alberta Industrial Heartland are critical to that growth. And today we're taking another step to ensure the heartland continues to lead the charge towards Alberta's economic diversification. With that said, I'd like to introduce you to our other speakers. Leading today's announcement will be Minister of Environment and Parks, Whitney Isaac. Next will be Lori Danielson, the Executive Director of the Northeast Capital Industrial Association. Afterwards will be uh, Dean Siraguchi, President and CEO at Kiera, our generous hosts for this announcement. After our speakers, I'll provide some brief remarks about the potential benefits for the petrochemical industry before we open the microphone to any questions. I'd like to introduce you to Minister Isaac. Good afternoon. It is an absolute pleasure to be here today at Kiera's Fort Saskatchewan facility on a gorgeous day like this. And I really want to thank the folks from Kira for uh, hosting us here today. You know, this facility is a shining example of the leading edge processing facilities that can be found in Alberta's heartland. This is Alberta's industrial heartland and it's Canada's leading largest hydrocarbon processing region. Kira's modern, efficient and innovative Fort Saskatchewan facility is one of uh, several world scale facilities that have brought billions of dollars of investment to Alberta and are supporting well-paying jobs for Alberta families. And today I'm happy to share details on the designated industrial zone pilot project in Alberta's industrial heartland, an innovative and important initiative that is helping drive investment in Alberta's industrial sector. I'd like to thank uh, Minister Nally, uh, Lori Danielson, Dean Setaguchi, and uh, along with other uh, industry, provincial, municipal government leaders who are here today joining us and, and um, sharing their support for this initiative. Attracting investment to Alberta's industrial heartland will help drive our province's economic success. Key to our success is making sure there is a well-functioning regulatory system in place to support those looking to make multi-billion dollar investments in Alberta. We've heard from stakeholders that our environmental regulatory rules and processes need improvement. And I'm pleased to say that Alberta's regulatory transformation is well underway. This latest initiative to support modernizing our environmental regulatory system is the designated industrial zone pilot project here in Alberta's heartland. Combined with other government initiatives that support the petrochemical industry, such as the Alberta Petrochemicals Incentive or APIP program, and ongoing red tape reduction efforts, the designated industrial zone, or DIZ, has the potential to help attract billions of dollars of capital investment and support thousands of direct and indirect jobs by the year 2030. That's not very far away. This level of investment would provide a huge boost to the province's economy, and we need to improve our regulatory processes in order to earn their business. The DIZ pilot project aims to make industry, make industry operating in Alberta's industrial heartland more competitive by reducing non-essential regulatory red tape. In today's competitive global economy, investors are looking for clarity and certainty. Industry stakeholders have told us that clear expectations up front will improve their application quality and their own planning. So how can Alberta provide clear expectations and a more responsive regulatory system to industry? First, it's important to note that improving regulatory processes to encourage investment does not in any way mean lowering environmental standards. Let me say that again. It does not mean in any way lowering environmental standards. 
Alberta's government is committed to ensuring strong environmental standards are in place while creating a regulatory framework that provides certainty to industry. Environmental outcomes can be achieved through clear expectations, improved understanding of environmental conditions, robust monitoring, management of cumulative effects, and oppor opportunities for shared infrastructure. New environmental programs will be put in place in the de de uh, DIZ to ensure environmental outcomes are achieved for the region. Through the hard work of our designated industrial zone partners, we've already identified opportunities to improve our baseline environmental knowledge, address data gaps through improved monitoring, and enhanced environmentally modeling in the zone. Over the next two months, we will increase the standards for air pollution abatement equipment in the DIZ and develop a management approach that will ensure that wastewater releases in the area will need to align with water quality standards in the North Saskatchewan River. On a wider scale, a new uh, surface water quality management framework that will apply to the entire length of the North Saskatchewan River will soon be in place to protect water quality and manage cumulative effects. We have absolutely no interest in cutting corners. The goal is simply to provide better clarity and efficiency to companies seeking regulatory approvals. Now over the last two years, the Alberta government's been working closely with our partners at Alberta's Industrial Heartland Association, including the Northeast Capital Industrial Association, the Alberta Environmental Network, the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance, the Fort Air Partnership, and area municipalities to establish a unique regulatory fr framework that will attract new investment and create good jobs for Albertans while achieving environmental outcomes. The intent of regulatory streamlining within the DIZ is to provide clear regulatory requirements for both new and existing facilities, provide certainty to investors in the zone, align municipal permitting requirements across partnering municipalities, and ultimately reduce approval processing times. As an example, the time it takes to renew an Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act approval in the DIZ has been reduced from an average of 18 months to six months. And again, not cutting any corners. In fact, the applicant advisory uh, service that re recently launched for the designated uh, industrial zone goes even further to address industry's need for clarity by assigning a senior environment and park staff member to serve as an applicant advisor to help proponents of major new projects navigate the unique and streamlined processes that apply in Alberta's industrial heartland. The designated industrial zone in Alberta's uh, industrial heartland offers potential investors more than just a clearer and more streamlined regulatory system. Because the area is so well established uh, as a hub for hydrocarbon processing, companies looking to build or expand in Alberta's industrial heartland can take advantage of clustered infrastructure, and this is really important. Investing in an area with environmental infrastructure already in place, such as water intakes and distribution systems, robust monitoring networks for air and water quality, planning for wetlands and drainage, and enhanced management of topsoil will reduce costs and project timelines. To support the development of clustered infrastructure in the zone, Environment and Parks recently issued a $1.5 million grant to Alberta's Industrial Heartland Association to fund regulatory-ready designs for up to three new water intakes, putting our money where our mouth is. Investments into new or expanding industrial developments in the DIZ are contingent on access to water, and this design will work to provide additional assurance to investors that water will be available for industrial processes. The Industrial Heartline, Heartland Designated Industrial Zone Pilot Project is on track to be formally implemented on October 1st. As this pilot progresses, the Alberta government will evaluate and improve the systems and concepts being used in the Industrial Heartland Designated Industrial Zone and determine how best practices from the pilot might be applied to other industrial zones in Alberta. Our goal is for the DIZ's regulatory management approach to be seen as a global best practice for managing and encouraging sustainable industrial growth. With the potential to attract billions of dollars in new investment and create thousands of jobs in Alberta's heartland sector over the next decade, the industrial heartland designated industrial zone represents another step forward in Alberta's economic recovery. 
thank you very much for all being here today. Um, I want to uh, next uh, introduce Lori Daniels from uh, the Northeastern uh, Industrial Capital Association. Did yeah. I get that right? Yeah. Thanks, Minister. <laughs> nice, to, nice to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Isaac and Associate Minister Nally for being here today. Uh, it's greatly appreciated and certainly uh, thank you to uh, Dean, John and, and Alyssa for their hard work in hosting us here today at Kiara's site. Much appreciated. I'd like to thank Alberta Environment and Parks, the Alberta Energy Regulator and Alberta's Industrial Heartland Association for working with the Northeast Capital Industrial Association to develop the policies and frameworks for the designated industrial zone that will create regulatory certainty, predictability, and time efficiency for both existing and new industry. Regulatory certainty and predictability strengthens investor confidence in this region. There are many positive policy shifts that are going to be resulting from the designated industrial zone work that increase our region's ability to compete with other jurisdictions not at the expense of environmental outcomes. I think Minister Isaac was very clear on that, and so am I. Coupled with the other programs that Minister Isaac mentioned that the government has in place, the designated industrial zone creates a more level playing field for existing industry expansions and new investments to our region. Our communities also benefit from municipal policies that are aligned with provincial policies within the designated industrial zone and they can also be assured of industry's continued commitment to environmental standards. As we celebrate our 40th anniversary this year, the Northeast Capital Industrial Association, and by extension, it's 23 members of which Kiara is one, have a long history of working with the provincial government on policy and frameworks specific to this region. Those include an ambient air quality management framework for ozone and fine particulate matter, a water management framework for the North Saskatchewan River in this area, and a regional noise management framework that is the first of its kind in North America for managing the industrial noise footprint in this region. The work on the designated industrial zone regulatory and policy pieces builds on that previous work. There are about 100 people from government, environmental non-government organizations, that Minister Isaac mentioned, and industry who have committed their time and knowledge to develop the designated industrial zone framework and policies. I'd like to acknowledge and thank those dedicated personnel. Without their efforts, we would not be here today. Thank you. I'd like now to hand the podium off to my fellow University of Lethbridge alumni, Dean Sitaguchi, President and CEO of Kiara. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you, Lori, for the introduction. My name is Dean Setaguchi, and I'm the president and CEO of Kiera. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank Minister Isaac, uh, Associate Minister Nelly. Uh, I'm not sure if Mayor Frank is here, um, but all of our guests from the Government of Alberta, our regulatory bodies, Alberta Industrial Heartland Association, and the Northeast Capital Industrial Association for attending today. Here we stand in front of Kira's Fort Saskatchewan facility. Uh, this is a natural gas liquids processing uh, plant, storage facility, and we also have a series of pipeline connections that distribute natural gas liquids to markets across North America. It's an integral asset for the Heartland region and a perfect location to announce that Alberta's industrial Heartland is now a designated industrial zone. Kiara has been an engaged partner and operator in the Heartland region for over 25 years and has been actively engaged on the efforts to bring this designation to fruition. As an Alberta-based energy midstream company, we know that competitiveness and innovation are cornerstones of the province's economic prosperity and the high standard of living we as Albertans enjoy. More importantly, we understand the significance of the heartland for Alberta's future. 
Today's announcement is an important achievement as it furthers collaboration between industry, our regulators, and the government of Alberta in finding responsibly produced clean energy solutions. Through the industrial zone designation, the region emerges as a competitive force where regulatory efficiency and scaled infrastructure unlock Alberta's potential to be a world leader in responsible energy. This aligns with CARE's plans to leverage our pipeline infrastructure and nearly 1,300 acres of land in the region for a low carbon vision that will position us as a significant player in Alberta's energy future. In fact, earlier this year, we jointly announced with Shell a path forward to collaborate on potential low carbon projects in the heartland. Thanks to the work done by all involved in the heartland industrial zone designation, we can expect to see more collaboration, more investment, and innovation, innovative solutions in the region. On behalf of Kiera, I want to personally congratulate everyone who contributed to this significant achievement. We're excited to move forward and develop long-lasting benefits for the province, the industry, and the Heartland region. Thank you. I'll now hand it back to Associate Minister Nelly. Thank you, uh, Minister Isaac, and thank you to Lori and Dean for joining us to talk about the opportunities the designated industrial zone will bring to the uh, industrial heartland. The impacts of this change for the petrochemical uh, industry in, in particular will only accelerate the work we are doing to make Alberta a global center for responsible petrochemical manufacturing. And, and make, mo make no mistake, the global community is making note of what we're doing here today. This is significant to turning us into a destination for world-class petrochemical facilities. Since we first announced that goal as part of our natural gas strategy and vision, we have seen enormous interest and planned investments in the sector. This includes major plans within the industrial heartland, such as Dow's announcement last year of a major expansion to their existing ethylene facility. That project alone will put Alberta on the global map as North America's first net zero ethylene cracker, tying into the region's capacity for carbon capture utilization and storage, or CCUS. This will be the biggest private sector investment in 15 years in this province. It's also a great example of the kind of uh, benefits that the Heartland offers companies looking to invest in petrochemicals. When you establish a facility in the industrial Heartland, you're not just accessing land and feedstock, you're connecting to a host of services and, and markets that you simply can't access anywhere else. The creation of the designated industrial zone provides another level of service, removing red tape and ensuring companies can meet their environmental responsibilities. I'm proud we're taking this step to support the region, giving companies one more reason to pick Alberta for their petrochemical projects. We've already seen enormous interest, thanks in part to the Alberta Petrochemical Incentive Program, or APIP. That program puts Alberta on a level field with other jurisdictions while protecting Alberta taxpayers. Since we launched APIP in October 2020, we've received over a dozen applications from companies around the world. All told, these applications represent projects potentially worth over $28 billion in investments. Beyond the initial investment, these projects will offer reliable markets for our natural gas producers and more diverse economic opportunities for Alberta workers and small business. This is particularly beneficial for the Metro Edmonton area, as well as my constituents in Mournville St. Albert, who rely on the innovative mortgage-paying careers that this region offers. Our work to attract and retain clean energy and petrochemical facilities to this region means generations of future Albertans will also have long and fruitful careers, just like so many have experienced over the past several decades. These are careers that allowed skilled tradespeople, engineers, laborers, and the like to comfortably support their families without the sacrifice of out-of-town travel. We'll have more exciting news to share on the APIP front in the coming weeks, so please stay tuned for that. 
So thank you all once again for joining us here today. Minister Isaac, our guests from Kiera and NCIA, and I are now available to take some questions. If you want to come on up uh, and join me up here. Thank you, Minister Nally and Minister Isaac, Lori and Dean. Um, we will start, uh, we will let uh, everybody know that there are callers on the line. So um, star one to uh, ask a question and please identify yourself and uh, you will have one question, one follow-up. Um, anybody in person we'll start with. Uh, Darcy with, uh, no, Jerry's on, the line. on the line, okay. Uh, again, star one to uh, ask a question. So, operator, could you put through the uh, first caller, please? Jeremy Thompson, CTV. Hi there. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, and, and apologies, I'm going to start on a completely different topic here. Uh, question for, uh, for, for Minister uh, Isaac um, about the, the leadership race. Uh, membership cutoff uh, is tonight um, to vote in this. And uh, so... We're just seeing that several MLAs have been shifting their support from, from Travis Taves to Daniel Smith over the recent days, wondering if you're putting your support behind a specific candidate at this point and, and what this uh, sort of support shifting says about how, how unified the party is now and, and will be after the race here. Well, thanks for the question. You know, um, we're in an important process right now. It's a democratic process. And I want to encourage uh, Albertans out there to make sure that you get a membership by, I think it's 5 o'clock tonight. Don't miss out. This is your opportunity to vote for the next Premier. You know, people are going to make decisions on who they choose for Premier next on their own criteria. I personally am supporting Travis Taves. And uh, I encourage everyone, though, to make sure that you take a look at all of the candidates. Have a look. At, make sure you get your membership by 5 o'clock tonight for those you, of you who uh, want to participate. And I hope many Albertans will, because we are choosing the next Premier. Jeremy, your follow-up? Yeah, it's on a, a slightly different topic. And I, and I believe the online cutoff is about midnight, so there's still some more time there. But uh, a different um, different topic here, uh, Minister uh, Isaac, I, I believe you were the Associate Minister um, for the status of women back in February when that essay contest launched. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, Given, you, given your role then, wondering what message the, the, the controversy here sends to you know, women in Alberta and the rest of the country, given that your government is, is yeah, it's renouncing the essay, but at the same time sort of declining to say why that essay was chosen as a winner in the first place. Sure, thanks for the question. Um, as you know, I was the minister, the associate minister for status of women, previous to becoming minister for environment and parks. Um, this essay context, uh, contest, I became aware of it after it was already launched. It was actually an initiative of the Commonwealth Women Parliamentary Association, and um, which actually uh, operates under the Legislative Assembly of Alberta office. And that office is a nonpartisan office. It's there to support all MLAs, regardless of, of uh, partisan affiliation. And uh, so I wasn't aware that the contest had actually launched. And frankly, I wasn't aware of any of the essay outcomes until uh, Tuesday, late Tuesday this week. Um, you know, personally, I do not uh, hold any of the beliefs that uh, were expressed in that essay. And um, at the end of the day, it's been said by the participants uh, on choosing the essay that um, that a mistake was made, an error was made, and they've apologized for it. And um, I can tell you that as Associate Minister for uh, Status of Women, I worked very hard on issues for women, uh, including uh, women in STEM, promoting women in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we offered scholarships uh, for 50 women and actually ended up offering scholarships, I think, uh, uh, almost 200 scholarships at the end of the day. We ended up quadrupling it. Um, really worked hard to make sure that we understand that women are the backbone of this economy. If we uh, don't do everything humanly possible to make sure that women can participate in our workforce, we are missing out. Uh, women will miss out, but our entire economy will miss out. And our government's worked hard on many of the issues that make sure that we can include women in our economies, uh, including uh, making sure that daycare is affordable. Many families are going to end up paying 50% uh, less for daycare than they used to, and that's huge. 
that enables women to participate in the workforce like never before. And so I'm really proud of our record, actually. And so I think that's the message that Albertans should take. Um, and uh, I think I'll leave it at that. I think that's, that should be our last question on that issue, because we are in front of an amazing project here, the um, designated industrial zone. And that has a huge future for all Albertans, including women. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Jeremy. Operator, the next call, please. Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Apologies, this will not be the last question on that particular issue. I'm wondering, Associate Minister, you said that you found some of the views in that third place essay uh, don't align with your personal views. Some of the, you, I think in the statement you called them appalling. Do you think that the two women in charge of this contest and who are also responsible for the status of women portfolio in Alberta should resign? So I said I would take that as the last question. I'm going to say this. The two women, uh, Jackie armstrong Hamanyak and Jackie Lovely, have both said unequivocally that it was an error, and they have apologized. And to me, that's the end of it. We are really here uh, for the designated industrial zone in Alberta's industrial heartland. It's incredibly important to all Albertans. So really hoping the follow-up is going to be on that topic. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi, thanks for that. Um, I need to ask you, as somebody who formerly sat in that associate minister role, you've talked about this being an error, but we have yet to get an explanation from the government as to how this error happened. We have about a dozen questions that have been unanswered by this ministry. So in your opinion, how did this happen? What happened in the process to allow that essay to be published and celebrated by the government of Alberta? So the essay was actually published by the Legislative Assembly Office. That's for starters. This was a as Legislative Assembly Office supported activity. It was not a government activity. It did not come out of my ministry. The two women have apologized. And if you'd like to, any further information on the process or, or any of that, I suggest that you need to talk to Speaker Cooper, who actually uh, is the head of the LAO. And I would encourage that uh, you follow up with him on that. Thank you. Operator, just uh, double checking, are there any other callers on the line? There are no other questions in the queue at this time. Okay. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.